he's going to be sentenced uh, to 15 years hard labor, and he's you don't have to worry about him anymore. Oh. So then I decided I'm going to move out of my mom's apartment, yeah. and I'm going to go start going to university, and I felt like I have my freedom now. Yeah. And my mom was, of course... I guess that. Super against that. Like, okay, fine, you're going to divorce him. That's one embarrassment. But now you're going to live by yourself? Yeah. There's no way. Like, yeah. it's too much embarrassment for her. So I waited until she went to go visit my sister in Florida. And then I packed my bags, took my daughter, and I left. And uh, I got myself, uh, like, a basement suite and I started to get student loans, and I started to go to university. And then when I was in university, I took a course called the History of Religions. And when I was in that... You were still wearing a niqab? No, wow. now I was just wearing hijab. Okay, now you were just yeah. you were downgrading. I was downgrading, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went back to just the hijab. Um, but and you had had a hijab gradual. when you were nine to... Like 19, and then from 19 to 24, you had a niqab, and then back to hijab. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. And um, so now I'm in university, and I took this course, History of Religions. And that's when I discovered that the whole Quran is just plagiarism and lies and bullshit. And... All my life I had been fighting inside of me against all of this stuff, but I was too scared. You didn't know what was in, Quran, in the Quran at, at that I point? I knew what was in the Quran, but I thought it was the word of God. Yeah. And I thought if I didn't obey, he's going to burn me for eternity. So then I found out that it was actually lies. Did you, it's not did, a did you know book. about like... Everything. Yeah, of course. I, you knew, everything. Of course I had studied the Quran all your life thoroughly. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I studied Quran and Hadith very carefully. But you personally accepted all that. I for personally many was, years. I right? was I was scared. Yeah. I never liked it. You never questioned it. I wasn't allowed to question it. No. But so internally, you didn't question it either. Internally, I was constantly struggling. Yeah. So it was like an. It's like if you're being forced to accept something you don't want to accept it but you have to accept it because you don't have another choice yeah and then inside you're always feeling terrible about it yeah. but you can't say anything yeah, yeah. and you can't act differently yeah. you have to just swallow the pain yeah. you have to swallow the questions uh swallow the the anger and the you know the frustration and everything you just ignore it because what are my choices if i if i question it I'm going to burn in hell. If I don't listen, I'm going to burn in hell. And I was really scared of that because I had been told from the age of five exactly detailed what's going to happen in hell. Yeah. And it's not for a kid. This is not just like stories. It wasn't told to me like stories. It was told to me like fact. Yeah. So I was terrified. Yeah. And if they told me you have to let him beat you because Allah said he's allowed to beat you. You have to let him rape you because Allah said he's allowed to rape you. I would let them do anything because Allah said it. Yeah. So that's the kind of person I was. Yeah. Inside, I was full of sadness and anger and frustration. And but, but you believed it. You struggled. I wasn't. It wasn't that I believed it. It's that I was too scared to react. Yeah. I was too scared um, to even admit yeah. that I didn't like it. And you also tried to get if, out. Uh, if, yeah. uh, if your husband wants to rape you and you don't want him to, the angels will curse you. All the angels will curse you until the morning. Yeah. So I'm trying to explain to you that yeah. I didn't have a choice yeah. to not believe. Yeah. Or I didn't even have a choice to believe. No. Yeah. This is what you have to do. Yeah. The whole system yeah. is against you. Yeah. So I don't even have the opportunity to ask, yeah. can you please not rape me? Yeah. Because Allah and the angels and everything is positioned that if I 
open my mouth. Yeah. Even if I'm you're brain, you should go and do, yeah, have sex with your husband. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter. What, what he doing? wants is what happens. That's the way I was raised as a child. That's the way I was raised with him. Yeah. It was no different. And okay. now I started to go to university and then I discovered that the, that the Quran was not this divine book from Allah that, you know, verbatim, the word of the this God, but it's actually just plagiarized from Christianity and from Judaism and even from pagan stories before that. And so it took away all of the fear, like all of the divinity of this book was gone. Because yeah. now it's just a book. It's just a book of stories, of yeah. lies. It's bullshit. And so... I felt very happy to find out that it wasn't true because now I didn't have to struggle so much internally. Um, I didn't recognize that everything that had happened to me had a connection to Islam until then. Until then, I oh, didn't. Until then, yeah. until then, I thought everything that had happened to me was, was random. No, I I knew that it was. Part of I knew that it was part of Islam, but it wasn't like I didn't ever push against Islam. I guess that's how I should be saying it. Yeah. Like I pushed against my mom, I pushed against the man I was married to, but I never pushed against Allah. Yeah. Like I felt like that was not that was not your struggle. That's never gonna happen. Like yeah. that was not unquestionable. But when when I discovered that the Quran was bullshit, that's when I was like, wow, I can even. I can even ignore him. I can even ignore this Allah person, the yeah. character that's going to destroy me and make me suffer. And So it made me really feel so happy that I didn't have to... I didn't have yeah. to hate Jews anymore. I didn't have to hate all non-Muslims anymore. Did you hate anymore. Jews? Oh, I, I never to... met a Jewish person, yeah. but I was taught to hate them because they were... These horrible. They were fit men. Yeah, they're yeah. just like worse than dogs or pigs and yeah. all this stuff. Um, and but it was all non-Muslims, not just Jews are extra hated, of yeah. course, but all non-Muslims, same thing. And so I was really glad that I didn't have to fear that I didn't have to do things that were against my nature because I was scared to follow my nature. Yeah. Now I could let my nature be first. Yeah. And, but it was a slow process. It wasn't like overnight, no. you know, because even though I didn't believe in Allah anymore and I didn't believe in heaven and hell anymore, somehow I was still scared and I was yeah. still full of guilt and I was still dealing with weird... Was it also a loss? Because if you're a Muslim and you really believe... I don't know, does it feel that you lose? Some people have told me that they have that they felt sadness to find out that it was all a lie. I didn't feel sadness. Oh. I felt resentment and anger that so much of my life was wasted on something so stupid that I had dealt with so much trauma because I was scared of some invisible story that was made up and I would never have allowed all of those things to happen to me. If there wasn't like this holy book. If that, I wasn't scared, yeah. I would never have wasted all of those years praying and all that bullshit that I was doing for all those years. I never would have done any of that if I knew that it was all a lot, like that, it, yeah. that this thing didn't and, exist. And you were a good Muslim, right? I did everything that I was supposed to do, yes. And still you were beaten up by yeah. both your mother yeah, and course. husband. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even though you... Because... Sometimes, like, you hear, oh, it's because you didn't listen, or... Getting well, beat up was not related to, like, a punishment. It was just, that's the way it is. Yeah. It was just, like, this is... It's just normal. It has to happen, because... It's, it's like... There was a video, actually, online from Moroccan women, where they were interviewed, do you think that a husband should beat his wife, of course, because she, she wouldn't respect him. If, and do you get beaten up? Yeah, of course my husband beat me up. And exactly. this is like 2017. Yeah. yeah, it's a natural, normal part of life. Yeah. It's not like something surprising. Oh no, he beat me up. Yeah. It's just like... Yeah. Accepting.
accepted and expected. So, uh, so no, I didn't feel sadness. I felt very yeah. happy to not have any of that yeah. pushing me and forcing me to do things against what I wanted, what I felt was right. But the process of going from a hijabi and to a like a normal Western clothing and that, so on. Not even just the clothing, but the whole thing was a very long process. Yeah. Because, like I said, I was taught to never think, but to always follow. Yeah. So now you take away the path that I'm following, I had nothing. Yeah. Because now all of a sudden I had to decide. Was that scary? Oh my, that was the scariest thing. Yeah. Because I always knew. I think that is one of the reasons why Muslims who are doubting, they it's really. It's scary to doubt. Yeah. And also they feel, I have nothing. I There's have nothing no else. identity. I have no rules. I have no morals. Because that's all you were yeah. given. Everything you're given is Islam. Yeah. This is your path, a very clear path. Yeah. And once you take away that path, it's almost like you're drowning in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Because there's no, what do I do? How did you cope with that? I had a daughter, so I had no choice but to cope. Yeah. I think a lot of people that I know that have been through so much trauma after leaving Islam, they were able to break down, you know, like they either self-medicate with alcohol or with drugs or, or something like that. They have some sort of breakdown. Yeah. I never had a breakdown because I had a baby. Like I had, at, at this point she was like maybe two or three years old. Yeah. And so I had to figure out how do I live? How do I, how do I, how do I find my a rental house? house? Yeah. yeah. How do I, how do I take transportation? I never had taken public transportation before. Really? How do I apply for school? You know, how do I um, apply for a social insurance number? Like, how do I, yeah. how do I start to live in the world? I knew, yeah. I knew nothing. All I knew was what I was told, and I listened. Told, and yeah. I listened. Now all of a sudden, nobody's telling me anything. Yeah. And I don't have any guide. There's no Google. <laughs> this is the days before the yeah. internet, so I just had to step by step discover. You know, I had to figure it all out. It was a very long. Did you long, then difficult. get help from the government to like? I got student loans yeah. from the government, so. But no, not any counseling. No, any. No, 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 not any. But I did like, have all sorts of weird things that would happen to me. Like I would. When I was in school, like all of a sudden my right arm got paralyzed. You know, like you have you get physical reactions yeah, to stress to trauma, yeah. and to trauma. And so um, I was taking a psychology course, and one of my psychology instructors offered for me to Aww. talk to her during my office hours, and yeah. that was my very first counseling introduction yeah. to the fact that there that I needed counseling. Um, How I did a, she know that? You had, yeah, I think it was pretty obvious. I oh, probably, yeah. I was probably a mess, because I was a, I was a single mom, yeah, and going to school full time. Maybe she didn't even know the half of it, right? Yeah, yeah. but she can just see that you're stressed. that I probably, yeah. yeah, don't sleep, I don't eat, I didn't have money to, you know, like everything was just, yeah, difficult all the time. So, um, even my doc, I went to my doctor because I was feeling sick with something, I can't remember what, strep throat or whatever, and she took one look at me and she started to give me antidepressant pills. And I was like, what's this? I'm not... <laughs> and she's like, take yes, these you pills. Are. <laughs> like, you're trying to raise my yeah. daughter and live my life. I had just pushed all of this yeah. stuff behind me and I kept going. Yeah. And so, of course, you can't just push it behind you. It's going to find its way to... Yeah. affect you physically and uh, anyway fast forward got through all of those years of university and I got my three degrees and then I started teaching in colleges and and now I'm a, I have tenure at the college that I teach at so <laughs> that was just this year yeah. so I'm you know I I made it through I've been married now to a wonderful man for the past 10 years 
So he's never been Muslim and has, doesn't know anything about this world. In fact. Really? But yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful that I was able to save my daughters, especially my older daughter, to be honest. Like yeah. my, my older daughter, when I see her successful and happy, it just, it's like, it was all worth it. Yeah.